Now let's concentrate on the collar and we want to do some sculpting on this, but I wanted to show you something that you could do in ZBrush if you want to do some changes to the structure of your objects. So in this case, let's say that there's something that we wanted to add to this uh, underlying structure that we didn't do in Maya. Instead of going back to Maya and changing it and then re-importing, which you could certainly do, you could also change it here in ZBrush using ZModeler. So let's go ahead and I'm going to just solo this object and turn on the polyframe. And let's say that we want to add sort of a, a trough that kind of comes up and around. So kind of an, an inset line that goes all the way around. Let's go into our brushes and let's go to Z modeler. So Z modeler is context based. So whatever you happen to be hovering over, you have different selections and actions that you can do. And so you'll get a lot of feedback here on the screen as you hover over each of those. And so let's say we want to add an edge loop. So we're going to hover over the edge loop, any of the edge loops, hold down space bar. And this lets us choose what action we want to do. So we can delete edge loops, we can move them. But what I want to do is insert an edge loop. And down here under target, you can either insert multiple edge loops or single edge loop. Let's go ahead and do single edge loop. So now when we click on any edge loops, that's the action that we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and add an edge loop here. And let's add one right next to it. Okay. And so now what I want to do is extrude in this loop of faces. As we hover over a uh, polygon and we hit space bar, this will let us choose an action for polygons. So in this case, we want to extrude polygons and we want to extrude not a single polygon, but a poly loop. And so whatever we do is going to happen on a loop of polygons. And here we can choose the modifiers that we want to set. We'll go ahead and leave those as is. So now when we hover over this polygon and we click and drag, you can see it's now extruding in that poly loop. I don't want to go quite so far. So maybe something like that. Okay. And you can see it did it all the way around because that's a loop. Now, when we smooth this, I want this to be nice and hard edged. And so going back to our edges, I don't have to change anything because the edge context action is still set. So I can go back in and add an edge loop here and here, and we're good to go. Okay. So now we want to sculpt on this. So let's go back to our standard brush for a second. And before we do that, we have to subdivide this. We need to get enough polygons in here to be able to subdivide it. So I'm going to hit control D. And you can see it keeps subdividing each quad into four more quads. Okay. You can also tell the number of polygons if you hover over the object. Let's go ahead and do this one more time. And let's turn off our polyframe. And so by doing a stroke, you can see kind of the resolution. You can see it's not really what we want yet. We'll have to subdivide again until we get to the point where we get some detail that's a good quality detail that we want. So I think that's pretty good. You can always subdivide again if you need to. But what I want to do is start to block things out. So I want there to be sort of a couple of feathers or wings here. And so I'm going to go to Damien's standard brush and go to stroke. And we'll just set our radius up something like that. And I'm going to define the edges of these wings. And so this is a good spot for you to kind of create what you want to create. I'm going to have my own design, but the idea is that it's a carved wooden uh, collar or cowl that this guy's wearing kind of ornamental. So it could be, you know, it could have relief carvings about the history of his culture, things like that. And so uh, the things that I carve into it doesn't have to be what you carve. Uh, the idea is just to, to do kind of the same type of detail. So I'm going to say that there's one that's kind of coming like this and then one in front of it. So I'm going to start by kind of drawing back to this trough. And you can see here, even then, we're getting a little bit of jagginess on the edges. So I'm going to subdivide one more time. And then from the edge here, I'm going to actually come across and create the edge of this wing. And then over like that. Okay, so this is one, and then this is one that's kind of overlapping. Let's go back and get to our standard brush but I still want to use the lazy mouse stroke. All right. And so what I want to do is create a line, kind of the stem that comes and comes all the way back here. We can go back in and kind of smooth that out. I'll do the same thing here. Kind of smooth that out. Then I want to go back and get the Damien standard brush. And I'm going to just come in and create these sort of lines coming out from the side here. 
And I want to do that with kind of a smaller draw size. I want to take the focal shift down a little bit so that it's a little bit more sharp. Take the intensity down. And we want to do it on both of these. And I'm going to kind of alternate whether I'm coming from the edges like that or from the center, kind of back and forth. And you can do some that are kind of in the middle, some that go a lot farther, maybe all the way to the center or all the way to the outer part. So we want it to look like a feather, but not really like a feather, like a realistic feather. We want it to look more like some sort of a carved representation of a feather. And so we can just come in and add some detail kind of like this. Just going all the way to the outside. And then we'll do the same thing on this part. So I'm going to go ahead and just pause for a second while I finish up this detail. All right, next I want to block in some of the other details. And you can see I don't have symmetry on right now. We can mirror that over uh, later, or you can have turn symmetry on as well. And so I want to create these sort of long lines that come out here. Again, this is something that maybe you can do to do something differently, but I'm going to use the same alpha, the same standard brush that we used to cut those in, but I'm going to use it a little bit differently. I'm going to actually hold down alt, or you can turn this to Z add, and I'm going to actually add to our surface here instead of pulling out. And so I'm going to take the focal shift down, take the draw size down a little bit, I'm just going to experiment a little bit with the how it looks, so the size it, that it is. Okay. We go ahead and take our intensity down a little bit and the draw size. Okay, so I want to do something like that to start with. So I'm going to come and I want to take the stroke and change the radius so it's a little bit bigger. So I get a nice smooth stroke. And I'm going to come kind of around this way up and around. But again, you can do kind of whatever you want. So I'm going to come in and kind of make a loop like that. So something like that. Let's also come down here and let's create another couple of lines in here. So we'll come in here like that. Let's kind of go up a little bit more like that. And then something like that, kind of block things in. Now what I want to do is kind of define the edges of that. And so I'm going to go back to Z sub. And now I'm going to kind of follow along with the edges that I created here. And so kind of make sure that I'm going in the right direction here. We can move up and continue. And because this is supposed to be carved out of wood, you do have a little bit of leeway here in terms of roughness, you know, not, it's not supposed to be like a stamped metal piece or anything like that. It's supposed to have a little bit more of a hand created feel. So you don't want to, to make it too perfect. Okay, and then we can do the same thing down here, kind of define the lower edge of that. And kind of right there as well. And then I consider that kind of the places where it's been carved in. And so we could take our clay build up, get a kind of a low intensity, Z subtract. And let's come down a little bit. And I'm gonna go back and get the original alpha. And so let's get kind of a square alpha. And I just want to kind of take some chunks out of the spaces between those areas, right? Or the, between the raised areas. Add a little bit of roughness to it. We can go back in and smooth it over. Right up against that line. Again, we're not going too crazy though. Do something like that. And we'll just blend it into more of a smoother surface. Okay, so you can do that across the surface. Let's go back to our Damien standard brush with a Z sub selected. 
And then if you want to add some more detail here, we can come in and let's get a smaller draw size, maybe bigger intensity and a more of a focal shift here. We can start to add some carved detail that's kind of coming up the sides here. Okay, so something like that. So go ahead and add that kind of detail to these three pieces kind of coming up. You can maybe roughen up some of these areas. I also want to put in the back, I'm going to put in the back some some other leaves like this. And again, this is the detail I'm adding. It's I just want something in here. If you wanted to spend a lot of time on this, you could re make something really, really cool, kind of plan it out and, and create a really uh, unique carving that kind of plays into the story of this character. Uh, but here we're just kind of adding some detail to, to make it look carved and kind of go along with the character that we're creating. So let's go ahead and finish up carving the cowl in the next clip.